So then guys, today I have the true David and Goliath of mini PCs in front of me. And if you know anything about me, I love mini PCs. And today I want to talk about these two brand new models from Mini's forum. The first one we have here is the Neptune HX100G. And then the smaller one that we have here is the Mercury EM780. And both of these mini PCs are super powerful for what they are. And you'll see what I mean here. First of all, though, what I want to do is I want to do a bit of an unboxing of both of them to show you what came inside each of them. So first of all, we'll start out with the HX100G first of all. So here is the box then for the HX100G. So yeah, it's quite a cool box and everything. I do like these sort of hexagons and everything. So like I said, this is the Neptune series of this machine. We've got all the specs and bits and pieces on the back there and everything. But let's get this box open. Let's see what's inside. Let me just pull this bit here. And then we open this up. Let's have a look then. So yeah, it's pretty cool and everything. Oh, all the usual. We do not recommend customers remove the CPU and everything like that. Let's see if we can get Get this out now oh i'm gonna break it instead i'm gonna see if i can pull this out okay <laughs> it's a bit stiff actually i have to turn it upside down actually to get this out it's not coming out at all for me let's have a look that's better we're doing it upside down instead there so yeah it's uh, a little bit there but there we go we've got the actual main computer here actually i do like this sort of honeycomb sort of thing and mini forms that's pretty cool that is i do like that let's just uh, move that out of the way but yeah that is pretty awesome i do love Love it it's quite a nice and small design yeah it definitely reminds me of like a mac mini but we'll put that to one side see what else we've got inside the box here so this here is actually a stand for the actual uh, computer as well we can assemble and everything like that we've also got the power brick as well well it's a bit bigger than i thought it would be but still hide it underneath your desk you're never really going to see it there's another part for the actual sort of desk there to hold up the actual computer and then we've got a hdmi cable and then of course the standard uk power plug as as well so yeah that is pretty cool what we have there and then of course the mini forum computer so that was quite impressive what we got there let's have a look at the em780 next of all so this box is definitely smaller look at that's my hand size it's quite small isn't it <laughs> so yeah tiny little box here it's great here got all the specs and bits and pieces on the back what i really really like and everything so you know what you've got here but it's really small uh, let's just see if we can get this open there far more smaller this box is tiny this is so again usual bits and pieces telling you information do not remove the cpu and things like this just keep it as and also a little guidebook there that is it that is tiny and we'll look at that in a minute but let's see what else is inside this box here because it's tiny i don't know if i can get everything out here i go have to shake it all out and get it all out and see what's inside what have we got here then so we actually have here a um, adapter here let's have a look what we got inside here oh that's cool uh usb c to ethernet and another sort of um adapter there power one if we wanted to do that and then we've also got the power supply what is tiny look at that it's just a usb c normal power supply that's incredible hey HDMI cable as well and then the USB-C cable too for the actual power because it's just so small that is incredible how dinky that is I'm really really impressed with that so let's get the mini PC out of its packaging here just to get it out just to show you guys and there we go that is the mini PC and that is pretty cool and tiny so next of all let's talk about the overall design for both of these mini PCs now the Neptune HX100G is a design that's been out for a while now. We've actually had different sized chips and things inside of this machine before. And overall, it's a pretty cool design. I actually quite like it. I like it that you actually get this stand that we talk about in the unboxing. So I've attached it here and everything. We can have it standing upright. And then we'll also, we have lots, lots of cooling fence and things and fans around inside it to keep it cool. Really, really useful. It's quite small on your desk, as you can see here. You can stand it upright. And I absolutely love the design here. I do like the quirkiness of it. I like the sort of the shapes here on the side, everything. So yeah, overall, it's quite a good design. And then also compared to say a mac mini it's actually quite small as well it's around about the same size as a mac mini i'd say but obviously you do have the power brick what does come with this and yeah boy the power brick's about two thirds the size of the actual hx 100g as you can see right here but if you don't mind hiding that underneath your desk, like what most people would do, then to be honest, this is quite a great device. And even this would fit well, say, underneath your TV, for example, something like that, or just on your desk. 
But then moving over to the Mercury EM780, it is quite different to what we actually got right here. This thing is tiny, but it's also super powerful. But let's have a look at the design first of all. So as you can see here, I put some AirPods next to it. These are AirPods 3, and you can actually see the true size of this, how small this mini PC is. It's absolutely tiny. And to be deadly honest, I absolutely love this little design. It's really, really small. I love the small factor, and yet it's really, really powerful as you're about to see inside of this. I love that you've got like your vents at the top here, and also you've got some cooling around on other bits and pieces around the sides as well. So that is really, really awesome. And you're probably wanting to know, well, if everything's so small in here, here, how big is the power supply? Well, as you can see here, it's absolutely tiny. In fact, it's about the size of, say, a normal smartphone charger. It's really, really small. And yet, it still packs out up to 65 watts with this. And as you can see, it has a package together. It's really, really quite small. You've got your charger here. And this is the UK one. We have a bit of bulkier plug. So, say, the US version will be a little bit more smaller than this. And it just charges, or it just works by USB-C. I'm not going to say it charges. It's got no battery. But, yeah, it works by USB-C. Just be plugged into this with a 65-watt charger here. And, yeah. Yeah, off it goes. That's absolutely incredible for it. But next of all, what I want to do though, guys, we've talked about the actual design. Let's now have a look at the ports then of what we got. And first of all, we'll have a look at the HX100G to see what ports we have on board right here. So on the Neptune HX100G, the ports are all on the front and also on the back. And on the back here, we have, say here, a Ethernet port. And that Ethernet port actually allows you up to 2.5 gigabits was absolutely incredible we've also got three usb 3.2 ports we've also got two usb 4 ports here as well what's really really cool usb c type ones also hdmi 2.1 ports here two hdmi ones that and then also you've got the power input port too but then switching over to the front what we have here, we have another USB 3.2. We also have another USB 4 port here, USB-C one. And then we also have a headphone out and also a microphone in port. And of course, the power button too. So for a mini PC like this, it definitely gives you a fair amount of ports on this, which is pretty cool. But you're probably wondering about this little beauty here. How many ports does this have? Well, the EM780 actually has ports on three of the four sides. So starting on the back here, we have a HDMI 2.1 port, and we also have two USB 3.2 ports and also a USB 4 port as well. And then if we switched over to one of the sides, we've also got another USB 3.2 port. We've also got a micro SD card slot, and we've also got your sort of um, standard lock there as well. But then on the front, we've also got another USB 4 port. We've also got a headphone port. And one thing I'd also make yourself aware of that obviously one of those USB ports you would have to use for your power supply too to go into that. But there's nothing stopping you saying putting in say a hub into this into one of those USB ports and then expanding that out if you wanted to do that for example with this mini PC. So again overall for such a small factor PC you've got to imagine how small this is and how many ports you're getting on here. It's absolutely incredible. I absolutely love it that we're getting three USB 3.2 ports and then also we've even got a micro SD card slot as well and still a USB-C port too or you can expand that out like I explained was absolutely amazing but the thing what you probably guys want to know is well what are they like to run and what have they got underneath the hood in specs wise and what kind of power do we have out of these machines well the HX100G actually has an AMD chipset inside of it and that is the Ryzen 7 7840HS and with that, it's combined with 32 gigabytes of DDR5 RAM and also a one terabyte SSD. Now, with that chipset, you do get the 780M, but this computer also has a little party trick. It actually has a dedicated graphics card, not just a 780M, it has an RX 6650M inside of it. So 6650M inside of this machine right here with eight gigabytes of dedicated RAM to it. So this is completely separate to that 32 gigabytes of RAM. It's not shared at all with that dedicated graphics card. It was absolutely amazing. And in case you're wondering, yes, you can actually also upgrade this machine too. So what I've actually done here, as you can see, I've actually taken it apart here, taken off the back, and you can get to the guts inside of it. And as you can see right here, you actually have space for two NVMe 
storage sticks if you want to put those in there you do actually have the one terabyte already in there you can expand it and put another one in and also you can upgrade the ram to 64 gigabytes of ram if you really wanted to do that but in all honesty, you're getting quite a lot for your money there. Obviously, I'd probably say maybe expand the storage if you wanted to do that. But I don't think you need to expand like the RAM or anything like that at this stage. 32 gigabytes is more than enough for the power of this PC that we have right here. It was absolutely phenomenal. And I love the ability that you can do some upgrades inside of it too. Then for the Mercury EM780, well, this is actually quite a powerhouse too. In fact, the actual chipset inside is another AMD chipset and it's actually the Ryzen 7 7840U. So you have the 7840HS inside of this one and you have the 7840Q inside of this one. So this is the mobile chip version. You might have heard of this chip recently on my channel. So I actually did a video on the Framework laptop and has the exact same chipset inside of it as we've got inside this mini PC too. The difference is that this mini PC actually has 32 gigabytes of RAM inside of it what is DDR5 running at 6,400 megahertz. And again, it has that 780M APU inside of it. So this is actually using in the same sort of GPU space. And you can actually dedicate up to eight gigabytes of RAM out of your normal 32 gigabytes into that. You can do that in the BIOS. And in fact, that's actually I've done with this machine here. It comes standard with two, but you can actually change it in the BIOS to upgrade into eight gigabytes to share that as actual video RAM, which is really, really useful, especially you're gonna use it for gaming and things like that. You can change the mini one terabyte PCIe and VME in here if you wanted to do that but overall for what you're getting here with this mini PC it's a real real powerhouse and so is this one like I said at the beginning of this video these are the David and Goliaths of mini PCs right now and in fact let's see how powerful they are with doing some benchmarking first of all and first of all what I decided to do I decided to do geek benches find out the single core and also the multi-core score so with the benchmark completed, you can see here, starting out then with the HX100G with its 7840 HS inside of it, its single core score is very good at 2,700. And then obviously that multi-core is 13,641. You can see at the bottom there, that's even faster than an M3 sort of chipset. And you know, with the multi-core score, obviously it's a little bit slower in single core performance than a normal M3. But yeah, it's very, very powerful for what it is. And even there that mobile 7840u so this is the one that's inside the em 780 here single core performs to 2564 and the multi-core performance is just behind the m3 series and you know don't forget we're probably going to get an 8000 series probably put inside of this machine or something about this size in the future potentially for mini forum but it's very very competitive indeed for the actual sort of performance out of the main cpu that we're getting here now, I could do a check on the speed of the NVMEs inside of this, but like I did point out earlier, you can upgrade these if you wanted to, and I can tell you now, they are super fast ones inside of it. You're going to get easily over, say, 3,500 megabyte transfer on these machines, what is more than enough, and you can upgrade it to faster ones if you wanted to do that. But next of all, let's have a look at the power then of the actual GPU, the graphics inside both these machines, and the best way we can do this is using 3D Mark and then actually running here a test to see how powerful they both are. So those tests here have actually shown that the uh, Time Spy sort of score here is quite good here in comparison here. I've just shown you here. So obviously I can't run this on a Mac. You can't do Time Spy, unfortunately. So I've had to bring in something else. What is an RTX 4050, a six gigabyte what's in a laptop with a 12th gen Intel i7 inside of it here. So yeah, just having a bit of a comparison here, you can see here that the HX100G with that 6650M inside of it is giving us a score of 8,702. And then the 780, 40 years the em 780 and then this has also got that 780m inside of it. it's giving us 3005 was quite impressive for the size it is but you can see that here in comparison to an rtx 4050 6 gigabyte a laptop version of it of how much more powerful how little powerful it is and it's quite fair here that you're definitely going to get some good scores here out of 3d 
So overall, they are super powerful for what they are. Obviously, we were expecting this one to be far more powerful and surely it is there. But this one got to say, guys, look at the size of this compared to that. You know, it's not even taking, I can't even see the, the size of it, how it's much it's taking is tiny in comparison. And yeah, it's got so much power inside of this little mini PC here. And in fact, it's really, really good to both of these to do things like video editing here. I use Premiere here. And as you can see here, doing export with the video, there is no problems at all. It's absolutely perfect for this. If you want to do it, you're not going to have any problems here. And as you can imagine, it's completely up to scratch with, say, a Mac Mini with an M2 Pro compared to this machine here. And then we just say the normal M2 or even the M3 chipset compared to this mini PC here. It is really, really powerful for those needs too. And it's the same with photo editing as well in Photoshop. There are no problems there whatsoever. But what about gaming? And that is the big question you're probably wanting to know, because obviously at the end of the day, these run Windows compared to say a Mac or can't really do games too well, to be deadly honest. How do they fare out here? Well, I've done a series of different tests, as you can see right here. We first of all ran Cyberpunk as well, and here using the benchmark tooling, and then also GTA 5 with the benchmarking tooling. And then I also used Horizon Zero Dawn. And then finally, what I decided to do, I decided to run a test on Rise of the the Tomb Raider 2. And as you can see here, here are the scores. So starting out with the EM780 here, and this is obviously with that 780M inside of it. Um, you can see the scores here. GTA 5 did really well. It's all the games I would say are completely playable on this machine. So like GTA, you're getting you know, over 100 frames per second. Cyberpunk 2077, you know, this was on a low medium sort of mix here, and you're still getting 38 frames per second. Obviously there's no ray tracing on at all on this, nothing like fancy like that at all. So no ray tracing, Horizon Zero, 52 frames per second was amazing and even rise of the tomb raider now getting a bit more older in this day and age but still 57 frames per second and on those two bottom games there they were kind of again running at sort of a medium sort of specs here on that one so that's quite impressive and gta 5 was actually running on high as well with this so that's really impressive but then switching over then to the hx 100g with the 6650m inside of it obviously it's far more impressive than what we're getting here gta 5 we're getting close to 150 frames per second in some cases it did but averaged out at 142 cyberbug 2077 91 frames per second and by the way i've got to say everything here is on the highest it could be at 1080 this could be so yeah it's really impressive that cyberpunk 2077 got 91 frames per second obviously what i have to say is there is obviously no ray tracing switched on just total high settings and then horizon zero dawn got 100 frames per second and rise of the tomb raider got 120 eight frames per second so more than capable to play you know loads of games and even brand new games that are just coming out right now you'll be able to throw them at this machine and you could easily get over 60 frames per second on high settings at 1080p what is really really impressive so overall guys for 2024 these mini pcs i am absolutely in love with them and the great thing is i can imagine into the future what mini forums is going to do they're probably going to even stick in the amd 8000 series or type variants into these machines too but for right now the 7000 series that are inside both of these machines are more than enough what most people need in 2024 and yet they have such a small design and if you want to find out more information about about both of these machines and how powerful they are and also potentially buy one of them make sure you check out my description of this video because i'll be giving you all the details for both of these machines in there and with that guys i'd love to know your opinion on both of these machines what do you think of them and with that as well it's time to wrap up this video so if you have enjoyed watching it please do press the like button also if you want to hear the latest apple news or technology news reviews and comparisons make sure you subscribe to this channel and also also hit that notification bell too. Until next time guys, I'll see you really soon. Take care. Bye bye.